25 times the amount of money that she originally tried to obtain. Look at how successful women are when they just fucking play that role of damsel in distress. They get the money. Well, in this case, it's money. Uh, there, are, there are times when the desire is to, to, you know, is attention or action or whatever. <clears throat> in this case, it was money. Okay, this was expected to finance her projects. Well, you know, seven months later, she still hasn't produced anything. Um, I'm going to play a few videos about that if I can remember to look it up. She just, you know, it's like the song. Take the money and run. Exactly. I hear that she's touring the country. Well, as you can see, evidence of here, you know, at the TED conference, you know, she goes around. She's got a bunch of money now. She goes around speaking at events and basically spewing hatred and bigotry. And ironically, it's a, it's aimed at both genders. I mean, it, it, it's like, it's like, I don't know, like subversive, you know, subversively aimed at women or whatever. But it perpetuates, she teaches women how to perpetuate patheticness, you know? And then at the same time, she tries to use shame and guilt upon men and all this shit. She basically whines and bitch. And, you know, and, and when, when the vagina cries, we all listen. See, because we're all addicted, whether we're males or females. <clears throat> So with that in mind, I decided to launch a fundraising campaign on the crowdfunding website Kickstarter, where I would create a series of videos to look specifically at the way women are represented in video games. The idea being that if you were interested in the project, you could donate, and if you weren't interested, you could choose not to donate. Reach deep in those pockets, because after all, you want to help a woman fight oppression, don't you? Meh. Reach deep, deep, deep into those pockets and give out of the generosity of your heart. Look at me, I've got this pretty face. Look at me, trust me, trust me. Yes, I have the vagina. I have the vagina. I, I have the power to give life and perpetuate society. Look into my eyes and trust me. I need your money to help make things right. I need your money to make society better so us fellow vaginas don't have to be oppressed and so we can feel better about ourselves and, and punish that evil man. Oh, the evil men. Oh, how they've upset us. The evil men. <laughs> feel sorry for me. Give me your power. Please. Dominate so I can feel like I have a belonging in society, so I can feel like I'm accomplished. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? I should have had billions of dollars siphoned in my direction. Meh. Yeah. Turns out that there are a bunch of male gamers out there who were, shall we say, not too excited about this project. Oh, here comes a fucking rice tag burning. Oh my gosh, it's the Jews that did it. Me! Hitler tried the same tactics, you know what I'm saying? Play the role of the victim and then everybody, you know, they all sympathize toward you and you get what you want. I mean, fuck, it's like, what is it, like the, the, the oldest trick in the book? You know, it's one of them. I mean, uh, oh, look at how sympathetic Ted is toward women. Look, we're so progressive. We're, we're making society better. Don't you feel better about us now? Man. Independent, organized Ted event. Man. You know? Mm. Online harassment. Oh, my self-esteem. Oh, it's been destroyed. Oh. I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> now, I'm a pop culture critic. I am a feminist and I'm a woman. And I'm all. 
And as a woman, you will automatically trust me because I have the cradle of life between my legs. Look at me. Don't I look beautiful? Oh, yeah. Look into my eyes and... And even though I'm Anita Sarkeesian, and I bitch about how women are oppressed by the need to look good, and well, what do I do? I, I try to look good. All of these things openly on the internet. Well, so I'm no stranger like... to some. It's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Turns out that there are a bunch of male gamers out there who were, shall we say, not too excited about this project. All oh, them evil male gamers, them evil, uh, uh, nasty looking neck beard, fat ass losers in their mama's basement playing their PlayStation 3 and not having a life and, and, and not using their money and work and efforts to support women. Man, how dare them men. They didn't look attractive enough and they didn't go out there and, and bust their ass to give their paycheck to a fuck greedy woman and so she can have kids and fucking exploit the state and 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 and, and, and you know and 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 expect government to change everything in, in their favor to revolve around their ego and murder. now I'm a pop culture critic I am a feminist what, what's that say it say it bitch out there who were, shall we say, not too excited about <clears throat> this project. Now, I'm a pop culture critic. I am a feminist and I'm a woman. And, and by that, you are also a bigoted piece of shit that is intended on manipulating society to their detriment, hopefully to your benefit, to fill that empty pit of desire within you. And you are manipulative, and you are skilled in manipulating society, and you will do... You're a fucking sociopath is what you are. Because you're a feminist, you are a fucking sociopath. You're a manipulative bitch, and you'll pretty much stop at nothing, just like Jody Arias did, in order to get what she wanted. Because after all, hell hath no fury than a woman scorned. I'm all of these things openly on the internet. So I'm no stranger to some level of <clears throat> sexist backlash. Oh, because any opposition would automatically be sexist. Oh, because that's... Oh, I'm, a, I'm a woman and I'm oppressed by sexism. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to practice my crocodile tears so I can relate to these women, you know? I've, I've sadly gotten used to sexist slurs and sexist insults, usually involving kitchens and sandwiches. Really? You, you've gotten used to that? So that you'll actually toughen up and shut up and just fucking deal with it and not expect the, the society to conform to your preferences, right? I mean, you're going to take the you're going to take the morally high road, uh, the morally high road, right? I mean. You're going to live and let live, right? We'll see. But what happened this time was a little bit different. I found myself the target of a massive online hate campaign. Really? A, a massive, like, hate campaign? I mean, it was online, used the internet as its means, you know, of, of distribution. But, but it, a hate campaign, right? So, so what they do? Did did they imply that you're a contradiction to your own um, existence? Did did they imply that you um, are a contradiction to your own uh, inherent nature? Like what's done with men, you know. See, men are are inherently, you know, um, protectors and and providers. You know that that's their you know, their, their psychological and oftentimes biological role, <clears throat> that's why they're physically stronger, because they're expected to fend off enemies of the herd, okay, and then, you know, the protective provi uh, provider, and then, so, you know, so they accused you of being a contradiction of that, right, you know, by calling you a fucking deadbeat, you know, layabout, 
uh, you know, uh, shiftless, lazy, jobless, bum. Oh, yeah, let's see other contradictions of the male protector provider role. Oh, oh okay, that, that was of the provider role. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, oh, okay. Now let's handle the protector uh, role. Okay, so they 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 Anita they they accused you you know of <clears throat> of of violating or, or contradicting that right like like what's done to men all the time you know where where men are attacked uh, as a contradiction of the protector role which implies that you know. Uh, which the, the criticism is is there to imply that men are child rapists and 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 women rapists and and butt pumpers and you know and 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 wife beaters and child abusers and all this shit right i mean they they hurt you to your very core like they do to men right right anita is that what happened you, you know what i'm saying <clears throat> cuz it happens to men on a fucking daily basis you know, I mean, fuck. I mean, come on. Why don't you fucking man up if you're so fucking equal? Why don't you fucking woman up if you're so fucking dignified? I mean, the fuck. Come on. You know? Like, like, what could somebody have done to hurt you that fucking bad, huh? How fucking vicious was it? You know? Because, uh, hey... Hey, since when do you take a fucking loaded pistol and point it toward your own face and gently squeeze the trigger crying and, and thinking of why you need to kill yourself to benefit society? Hey, when have you had to go through that, Anita? Like, like where, where have you been in comparison to somebody like me or several other thousands of men, you know, in, in our daily society? Or how about the millions of men throughout history? I mean, fuck you, Anita. You're such a fucking bigot. I mean, why don't you fucking woman up and fucking rise to the fucking challenge instead of fucking squirming and being pathetic and bitching and just using your fucking genitalia to get divine favor, you know? <clears throat> now, the next couple of slides represent just a tiny fraction of the harassment I received, and they come with a very large trigger warning. All of my social media sites were flooded with threats of rape, violence. <laughs> now, I, I don't agree with this right here where somebody says, I'll rape you and put your head on a stick if you ever touch my video games. Uh, I hope you get cancer. That was actually used as a line of dialogue in a movie. Uh, it was called Wishmaster in 1997, I believe it was. And then somebody says, I would totally rape you, Anita Sarkeesian. Okay, that's bad. But then again, how can she be... How could she be offended? Because wouldn't that apply that she's attractive enough and desirable enough to have sexual relations with? I mean, come on. We, we, okay, you know, we really need to ask the question of what is rape. And what rape basically is is a violation of women's control. Uh, that's toward its most basic, elemental, and most fundamental um, simplistic uh, definition of what it really is based upon attribute. <clears throat> because um, what it is um, um, is that, you know, when sexual assault occurs, you know, let, let's say a, a type of, you know, let's say when, when undesirable sexual intercourse is done to men and women, it's not regarded as the same thing, even though it, it's actually the same events, okay? Um, you know, when it happens to men in prison, people laugh about it all the time. They say, don't drop the soap, motherfucker all this kind of shit, they'll say bubble will fuck you in the ass, you better not bend over, all this shit, and men are shamed, and it's just, it's just horrible, and, and it is hate. <clears throat> okay, meanwhile, if some guy, you know, uh, he says, uh, you know, basically something to boost the self-esteem of a woman, um, you know, like, hey, you're looking good to get, hey, you're looking good today, or whatever, and if a woman feels like she's in the mood to fucking wield power or whatever, then she'll play the role of the victim and say that she was sexually harassed 
or whatever. I mean, all this shit. I mean, look what happened to the disposable human doing just a, a couple months ago, back on, like, November 16th of 2012. And here it was, a girl rubbed her butt on his groin, like, half the night, and then, while he was watching a movie, you know, and this was at a friend's house, that it happened to, when he was watching a movie, uh, this girl had laid on his lap, and then he decided to touch her ass with his hand, since she made her ass touch his groin on, like, several times repeatedly earlier in the night, he thought he was welcome to touch her ass with his hand. You see, he thought that he was welcome to reciprocate the sexual expression and behavior. Okay? <clears throat> uh, it's just like the policy of, in a, in, you know, in a... You know, in a strip club, you know, not that I've ever been in one, I always hear all these people talk about it, especially when I worked, um, you know, in a city uh, doing security. You know, I always hear about these policies to where, you know, if a man goes to a strip club to uh, get a lap dance, the, the woman doing the lap dance is allowed to touch him in whatever way she wants, and yet he cannot touch her at all. He has to be completely passive and completely restrained, but yet she actually does all kind of sexual things to him. <clears throat> and it shows more about female nature and female desire. <clears throat> and she does this for money because, let's just put it honestly, women rather do that kind of shit than fucking fall off of a, a, a piece of construction beam on a skyscraper that's being built. You know what I'm saying? She rather, you know... Uh, um, she rather gets sexual with a guy she's not attracted to now, you always hear about all this shit, you know, women, they, you know, they, they want to be given the power to decide whom they have sexual relations with, and, and then, you know, that, that's how it's expected to be for the, for the safety and security and benefit of society, and all that. <clears throat> we, um, <clears throat> we give this privilege to women, and then, uh, you know, because they, they don't want to, you know, they, they talk about how they don't want to be exposed to things that are undesirable to them. And then yet, you know, they'll still desire to go through those undesirable things of, you know, getting sexual with a guy who they don't desire. They'll, they'll do that as an alternative to working a real job where there are risks to her health and safety. You know, like, honestly, she would rather, um, she would rather have some guy who she thinks is hideous have sex with her than to, you know, be putting rivets into, um, you know, a section of, uh, of steel beam to build a skyscraper, uh, and then risk, you know, falling off of that skyscraper and cracking her head open on the pavement below. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> when given a choice, women will always choose the more desirable thing. Just like in electricity, you know, they always choose, you know, electricity always goes for the path of least resistance. Now, I do not condone all the hostile stuff that was said to Anita Sarkeesian. I think it's very unnecessary. I think it's, I think it's actually more detrimental than it is beneficial. Um, and that sort of thing. So, you know, but men are responding because they feel hurt. And <clears throat> now as for the rape thing, you know, uh, whenever a woman decides to um, sexually exploit a man by turning him into an unwilling sperm donor, um, you know, when she pretends to be on the pill, she tells him that she's on the birth control pill, and then yet... <clears throat> Um, she, she gets him to have sex with her and she intentionally gets pregnant and all that. And then when that happens to a man, you know, and he talks about it, well, people, you know, especially women will say, they'll, they'll say something like this. Well, you should feel flattered that she chose you to be the father of her child. It, you know, it, it means that, that you're good enough to be a father figure. And so then I respond back by saying, oh, so when a man rapes a woman, 
Should the woman feel flattered that she was raped by the man? Because after all, wouldn't that mean that she is sexually attractive enough for a man to be interested in her? Shouldn't she feel flattered? You know, I just turn it back around on them. <clears throat> of course, if you were to say the same thing that I said, people would be all pissed off and outraged and, and shocked and surprised, but yet they better fucking swallow it because... You know, we hear women all the time use that Trojan horse of equality, and they don't really want it. They really want preferential treatment. And this gets back into their, their projection uh, of patriarchy conspiracy theory and how they say that, that <clears throat> basically women look at their own nature and the negative things about it um, – and then they, portray, they they project a lot of that onto men and then call it patriarchy. You know, they say, well, men have automatic own group preference. They got their own brotherhood and they, they don't take care of, and, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, they, they don't uh, uh, reciprocate, you know, that kind of generosity with women and blah, blah, blah. So, so they accuse men of having automatic own group preference even though you see all the shit that feminists do where they have their their rape crisis centers and they have you know their their domestic abuse shelters and all this stuff where pretty much only women can work those jobs showing automatic own group preference and then they use the excuse of well a man wouldn't know how to deal with sensitive issues and well we can't trust a man he 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 might decide to to exploit his position of being around women and man, man, whatever kind of fucking excuses that they can invent to not have to obey the same standard. You see what I'm saying? And they do all their shit, and then they and then they use patriarchy as an excuse, as a justification. And they basically say, well, well men did that, and there's a patriarchy. Well, we need to be equal, so we, we need to do it too. You know, Or they'll just do it, not even acknowledge that they're doing the same thing. And they'll always blame patriarchy. <clears throat> and it's women who start up all this fucking gender warfare shit and that's why I encourage, you know, the, the, the philosophical movement of elite MGTO, you know, uh, to combat this kind of stuff because, you know, women bitch about how men won't leave them alone and, and men just view women as sexual objects and, 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 and men are just out to get sex and all this other shit and, 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 and all these offenses and trespasses. I'm like, you know what? We'll just shut off the fucking water valve, and you can fucking dehydrate. You know, I'm fucking tired of your shit, you know? And that's that's the kind of outlook. It's like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's actually give the feminists and the women what they say that they want. You know, they say they want to be left alone. Well, let's leave them alone. And then watch how they get all fucking pissed. And, oh, why doesn't he want to pay attention to me? Oh, my, my, my. <clears throat> And then they, they choose not to understand the real issue and why, you know, the reaction even happens. So what do they do? They say, well, well maybe he's not interested in me because he's got some other woman he's, he's getting loving from. He's, well, he's probably, well, well, he's probably cheating on somebody with that person too. And, and, and they just fucking invent all these conspiracy theories and all this pathetic shit to basically to basically get their way, really. I mean, women are so fucking pathetic, you know? Let's watch more of this shit. Sexual assault, death. And you'll notice that these um, threats and, and comments were all specifically targeting my gender. Really? The Wikipedia article about me was vandalized with sexism, racism, and pornographic images. Sexual assault, death. Mm, because of her gender. Well, this one actually mentions women. This one doesn't really. Um... And these, you know, these comments by men are 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 intended to make to <clears throat> make her feel as frustrated as what they feel. But you can tell that men feel attacked by this. And let's listen to Anita Sarkeesian as, as she plays the role of victim again. You know what? You know what? She fucking went there. She went there. You know. So we're we're gonna go there too. 
We're going to go. She already brought it there. Okay. Now. She already went there. Let's look at this video that I made. All right. My name is Man Slave, and I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. Today is Sunday, December 16th, and of course, it, my, like my clock says, it's 10.43 p.m. Um, I just got home from work a little while ago, and I am going to do a sound check, because people hate that, and I just want to make sure my audio is really good. Or I actually want to make sure that I piss more people off just by doing an audio check. Now, what this is, is, uh... So badly. You don't even know me or what drives me. I'm not even going to warn your arrogant ass. So, this dipshit says, you know, never been pwned, says, You threaten me, mangina boy. I don't care if you put me in a video. Go pet some manslave, you homo. Okay. Well, that's just, just really, um, you know, get on my nerves. You know, if somebody told me I was wrong or stupid for having my are irrelevant. You simply don't offer any substance. You are simply a troll. And this dumb fucker says, you got some spunk coming to you that you earned. Once I... F here, here it is. You got some spunk coming to you that you earned. Once I find you and rape your chubby ass, you fucking mangina. I am not a troll, you dumb fuck mangina. You really should go pet it. So go pet some, you gay manslave. You know, <clears throat> that's just another example of how I was threatened with rape and all that. And, hey, can I get up on uh, the TED conference and fucking piss and moan and get everybody to feel sorry for me? No! Oh! Oh, what, what, what's that? I don't have vaginal privilege. Oh, I'm just a man. And, and according to the feminist propaganda dogma shit, oh, according to that, you know, because I have a penis, I'm a danger to society. So we shouldn't feel sorry for dangerous people now, should we? No, we shouldn't feel sympathy for the villain. And here's some more stuff also. What's this video loads? Come on, cue it up. There's also the comments that I received. I make video uh, harmful to them. <clears throat> hey, when people get on my nerves, I tell them to go pet some. Or some more of this. Oh, I know what video is. It's differential bullying. Uh, where is it? Differential bullying. <clears throat> Validation warfare is the struggle between both the male and the female gender. Validation warfare is the struggle between both the male and the female gender to fulfill existential satisfaction at the expense of the other gender in a form of destructive competition because of psychological differences resulting through gender resulting through gender roles and cultural perception. Right, let's get further into the video. They'll ever do anything to me, but it's the thought that counts. charged because I've never been arrested. Okay, um, I don't have any criminal history. Uh, you're going to have to pay the consequence. I mean... Mm, come on. Load. 
You act as if you don't know that women attack us in the most hurtful ways possible. They allege that we are a contradiction of our very selves as males and are void of, void of existential worth. Just wait until it happens to you. Then you'll understand me. You label me as a woman hater and draw scorn and criticism onto me like a lightning rod. But I've discovered some things. Came up with this whole big theory that, you know... All right. <clears throat> So anyway, what, what's been, like, you know, people would say things uh, <clears throat> to me. Okay, I always talk about how I avoid women and uh, how I try to stay away from women and how women are not important to me and all that. And then, uh, you know, and then they see some of my videos and then they say, you know, people say to me, they say, you really need to stay away from women, you know, implying that I'm a danger to women and that in order for women to be safe, that somehow I need to be away from women. <clears throat> I'm like, listen here, you little fucktard. I don't want to be around women. You, you know, and like, the, the, they say it all the time. You know, one of them said, well, I can just imagine you calling up women on the telephone and, and breathing deeply whenever they answer the phone. They say that shit to me, you know? They don't really say it much anymore since, you know, I got rid of some of them people on YouTube. <clears throat> um, or whatever, but, you know, that's the kind of shit that happens to me. I mean, and now check out a video of mine titled... Um, delve into our sources of uh, motivation and it's basically um oh where is it? this one right here you'll understand how women hurt me really really bad and uh well here let's check out this video right here it's only f this will help understand Th this one right here will really help understand the problem of of you know of the gender war and how women are actually really the aggressors, and how men suffer so much. It's a video of mine. You'll see the Validation Warfare. That's the YouTube user account. You know, you're doing a great job, but you're not using all your assets. With a body like that, you can go places. Sexual harassment makes you feel like less of a person. Our health and hotline numbers ask you to stop sexual harassment booklet in your public library. Yeah, that one gave me gave me my dark passenger, uh, as uh, the disposable human doing regards it. <clears throat> it basically uh, uh, put me in a situation of like perpetual social anxiety, uh, especially around women and all that. That was from the well that occurred to me in the early 1990s. That that's when it happened to me. Uh, you know, right around the time I was going through puberty. <clears throat> so right around the time when I become interested in women, like I get hit with all this kind of shit, and then I have to feel guilty about my own desires to even be around a woman, and you know, and what happened in this this uh, <clears throat> this sexual harassment video? I mean, when I was a kid and I first saw this, you know, I didn't know what it meant. You know, I just saw a man and a woman having a conversation with each other, and then all of a sudden she, you know, says the phrase sexual harassment, and um. So anyway, but like, think about what had just happened in this uh, this video, where um, the uh, I'll, I'll go back to it. Who the fuck does that? I mean, seriously, who does that shit? I, I mean, I can't say that it's never happened. But they act like it, it's common enough to necessitate this public service announcement. <clears throat> I mean, look at how, like, uh, okay, what the guy said was, you know, it, it might be regarded as annoying or inappropriate or whatever. But look at how she reacts to it, you know? I mean, just the whole victim and all that, and you'll see even more in the next video. I mean, even women portray themselves as basically this pathetic object that can't even 
dig its way out of its own hole. You know what I'm saying? I mean, or that can't even escape its own inferiority. I mean, it's just like, oh, you'll see in the next one, you know, where it's like, oh, he shuts out and bothered me and I can't do anything about it. Well, I, wish, I wish society would come to my rescue and bash this guy upside the head and demolish his face so I can feel like I'm safe. <laughs> Man. You know what I mean? What guy goes around saying this shit? Oh, if you want to keep your job, you need to, you know, be more sexy for me. No, it doesn't happen. I mean, it might happen a tiny percent of the time. I mean, like, but then again, the same shit happens to men, you know, done by women. I mean, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, how many how many times do my female supervisors have to fucking touch me in ways that I'm not comfortable with. And it happens time after time again at almost every fucking job I work. Oh, oh, fuck. But, but no, we got to hear about how men are the only one that are sexual deviants and, and make unwanted advances. And murmur. You know, I'm fucking tired of this shit. You know? It's like... It's pathetic. No. You know, I mean, there are women who are victims of stuff, but there are also men who are victims of stuff. Maybe feminists and women in society should regard it in proper proportion. I mean, fuck. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you always hear about women screaming for equality and they want to, you know, they, they want to be included in things and all that. You know, they want to be included in the military you know, when it's time to get, you know, medals pinned upon their, you know, their uniform. Oh, but, but when have you ever heard a, you know, whenever, when have you ever heard women begging to come back in body bags? I mean, it doesn't happen. Women just want benefits and then somebody has to pay the consequences. So that's left over for men. You know what I'm saying? Put it this way. After an, just look at dating. <clears throat> I mean, look at this. Look, look at this lopsided injustice. I mean, after an evening of fine dining at the restaurant, after all, somebody's going to have to pay the bill. Might as well be the man, right? Just <clears throat> check out this next one in just a minute. We're talking about sexual harassment here, and I don't have to take any sexual harassment by the Keep in mind, you know, sexual harassment laws, like Barbarossa said, are just some of the most fluid laws ever designed. I mean, it's not even like a universal standard or something that's set in stone. It's literally, like, dependent upon how women feel at the time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's literally, it's literally based upon the sandy foundation, if you want to call it that, or the volatility of a woman's emotions. And like Man Woman Myth had said, women have the they, they always have this arbitrary option of whether or not to feel flattered or harassed by male attention. <clears throat> they are given so much fucking power that they don't even acknowledge, and then they just fucking wield it like a child and misuse it and abuse it. And and society never fucking wakes up and learns because why we're all we're all loyal and dependent upon that vagina because we basically don't want to crap the bed, do we? We don't want to shit the bed. We don't want to shit where we sleep, do we? No, no, we are all loyal to that vagina because that's where we all come from. You know what I'm saying? It's like the vagina giveth life and it can take it away. You know? Why do you see Casey Anthony? And 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 Jody Arias and all them trying to expect to get away with murder, you know. I mean, fuck. I mean, come on. Look at how much privilege. How, look at how much privilege women have. You know, not only do they have rights, they've actually surpassed rights. They've got fucking privileges. <clears throat> you know, um, like look at it. I mean, a, a woman can microwave her her newborn child in the microwave and kill it in a microwave oven and get away with it as long as she says that a man sexually abused her at some point in her life 
regardless of how brief that sexual assault may or may not have even occurred. You know, you see what I'm saying? That's what society we live in. I mean, this perversion of justice. I mean, fuck. I mean, look at the double standard. I mean, come on. Like, uh, let's just go Nova and O V A S E O T I A. I'm typing with one hand because I'm holding a, rego uh, a recorder. Yeah, here we go. You see this? Here's exactly what it what it what it comes down to. A man in Nova Scotia admitted to poking holes in his girlfriend's condoms uh, is taking his case to the Supreme Court of Canada. CBC News has learned. Basically, this guy, he um, <clears throat> um, he wanted to have a child with her um, to, you know, basically so that she'll want to stay with him, right? Okay, and his, his girlfriend or whoever did not want a, a, a child. So what he did is he forced motherhood upon her by poking holes in his in, in condoms and then using them to have sex with her. And he basically tricked her into thinking that she can have consequence free sex. <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, the illusion that sex is really going to be about what it's pre presented as, you know, just consequence free enjoyment. Well, this dude gets in a, in a whole bunch of trouble. Okay, he gets in a whole bunch of uh, trouble, and um, and you know the the law comes after him. But oh, and look at this that uh, you know, and and it's all in the woman's favor. I mean, it's it's so much is. Now for me, look what happened to me, manslave. <clears throat> in the year 2010 well in on uh, March 18th uh, a girl snagged me as a relationship partner um, and she had this plan that she later revealed to me to basically get pregnant from a guy uh, but she had tried and failed with previous boyfriends but well she ended up having success with me um, she told me that, that something had happened to her reproductive system and that her reproductive system was damaged and that she's infertile as a result of that. Um, she got me to have sex with her on several occasions, um, you know, without condoms because she said that she hates condoms and she said she couldn't get pregnant anyway. Well, three months of that, having sex like, what, an average of two to three times a day, for th for the first three months, you know, um, and we'd have sex on average at least, what, it, at least 15 to 17 times a week, and, you know, and nothing happened, you know, month after month, she had her period, <clears throat> so I started to believe her, well, then in early, well, then in August, uh, the month of August, she, you know, of 2010, you know, after, what, about four months, well, three and a half months of having sex with her, all of a sudden she become pregnant. And, um, you know, she totally surprised me with it, you know. Um, uh, one morning, you know, she went into the bathroom and apparently took a pregnancy test, and this is like before daylight. And, and then she, like, wakes me up all of a sudden and says, you know, she's man slave, I'm pregnant, like, like, loud, like, all excited and loud, and then I was, like, asleep at that point, you know, right before that happened, then I, like, immediately woke up, and I was like, ah, and then she got all pissed at me later, because I didn't, you know, react the way she expected, <clears throat> which, you know, then again, shows premeditation on her part of getting pregnant, 
And, you know, and she told me later that she wishes that I would have cuddled with her and said, oh, I love you, baby, man, you know, and all this kind of lovey-dovey stuff. Um, <clears throat> well, um, then, you know, I manned up to my responsibility and took care, you know, of the, the pregnancy, made sure she took her prenatal vitamins and didn't smoke and, uh, all this other kind of stuff. I drove her to and from her doctor's appointments and was very loyal and supportive and all that. And uh, and then especially after I saw the ultrasound and, and saw the baby there and I'm like, I, I, I knew then it's like, man, there's a life inside of her and I took it all seriously. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so then, you know, I was there for the delivery and, uh, and caught... Uh, I, I started recording video footage of my newborn child just th maybe three minutes after um, they had um, um, basically what I describe as bringing him to life, you know, and cleaning him up and all that, and I could see into his eyes, and and uh, and it was just a, a really, you know, um, uh, emotional and... Um, and a positive emotional and just you know I, I felt this immediate connection with my with my son and um well I actually watched as they were cleaning out his nose and his mouth and all that and it was basically like a NASCAR pit crew um you know taking care of this kid and then after you know he's all fine they just walk away and he's just laying there and all that and it was just you know, it's breathtaking, <clears throat> and probably my biggest regret is not capturing those moments on camera. I was just so overwhelmed by the whole situation that I, all I could do is just stand there and watch, and um, I wish I had the camera recording, um, because you really get to see the whole miracle of life in its as it unfolds and that sort of thing and I just kick myself in the ass like every week that I think about like you know and that was almost two years ago when that happened you know that was on like the night of May 10th of uh, 2011 and I just kick my myself in the ass for not capturing all that on camera now about three minutes after all that happened I started recording then I got plenty of video of my son you know, and I try to capture video of his development, you know, when he learns how to talk and learns how to laugh and smile and do all kind of stuff, and because he's very important to me, but, you know, about three months after my son was born, you know, my my girlfriend at the time, who basically sexually ex exploited me, and then I found out about it, that she se sexually exploited me, you know, we were talking about our son, and, and she was standing next to me and just looked at me, you know, like you know, all lovey-dovey and stuff, and she said, oh, he was planned, and <clears throat> she said it in a way in which she, it's like she expected me to be flattered by it, you know what I'm saying, and, um, and then it made me a little bit wary, and then when she turned up pregnant for the second time, um, in October of, uh, 2011, you know, just a, a few months later, you know, what, f four months later, and, um, you know, and, uh, well, that's because of one particular night, see, I, like, I didn't even plan on having the first kid, and the second kid was totally unplanned on my part, she basically got even more desperate to to receive another child because she wanted kids and I necessarily didn't I didn't necessarily want kids because I thought we were just dating you know I was led on to believe that <clears throat> and um well you know she um well one night I came home from work you know I've mentioned this before I had my cycle where I work all day and, you know, a stressful job, and then I come home and get drunk and play Super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo and basically do my drunk driving on the couch, laugh, listen to, you know, 1980s new wave music, you know, dance around, laugh, and then fall asleep later. Well, my girlfriend at the time, 
I guess she decided that was an opportunistic time to get pregnant. So here I am. I'm pretty damn drunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, so drunk, I don't want to walk outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, she, you know, gets me to come back to the uh, bedroom, and she, you know, lays me on the bed and gets on top of me and finds a way to get herself pregnant. Uh, she sexually exploited me and all that. The point is she sexually exploited me to get pregnant, had no consequences. Oh, and guess guess how it was all treated, you know? People were like, man, slave, you should have you should have used protection. You you should have used birth control. You should have taken this seriously. You should have you should have been, you know, you should have manned up and and you know, you you should have, you know, been careful and, and man, slave, you should have been careful. Well, man, slave, this pregnancy could have been prevented. Well, man, slave, it's your fault. Well, man, slave, you need to bear the responsibility for your actions and all this other shit. Which the whole fucking time, that fucking bitch, my ex-girlfriend, was just fucking manipulative and just cold calculating in trying to get pregnant. Even years before she even met me. You know? <clears throat> and then... And then... She expected it to be okay? You know? No. When I see this shit, when I see how the legal system handles a guy who basically does the same thing, you know, um, this pretty much the same thing. Now, he had to use a little bit of a different method to achieve the same results, but he basically did the same fucking thing, and his ass gets in a bunch of fucking trouble, and it's called sexual assault. Oh, oh, and they, he's, he's called his fucking sex criminal, and all this shit, and uh, why? Because... Because he misled the woman and made her think that that she was going to have consequence-free sex. He did the same thing to, this, to, to his girlfriend that my girlfriend and so many thousands of other women have done to men. And when a man does it, oh, he gets, a, he gets, in, a fucking tr he gets in a fuck ton of trouble, right? And he'll probably end up being on the sex offender registry and all this other shit. And... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> um, so then, um, oh, but then when men, you know, but then whenever women do it to men, whenever men are the victims of this stuff and women do it to men, it's barely even frowned upon, you know, I mean, like, it's just fucking pathetic, and, and either this guy needs to share the same um, exemption for responsibility, like thousands and perhaps millions of other women, you know, well, you know, like in society, or all those thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of women throughout the years and all that, they need to fucking go to jail and be on a fucking sex crime registry for the shit that they've done to men, you know? <clears throat> Either this is okay... Or the other isn't okay. You know, they're, once again, the double standard. You know, it, which it just shows that society is inherently gynocentric. You know what I'm saying? Now let's go back to this. Once again, it's the patriarchy. Look at all them men. They just, it's everywhere. Like, men are just prone to degrading women. And, mer, mer, mer. and like, look at the woman. She's trying to ignore it all, but he just, he just won't stop. Oh, exactly right there. Look at that. Showing what women really are. Weak and pathetic. Right there. Right there. In an advertisement that's basically... Serves the feminist agenda, you know? I mean, come on, people. Look at how they portray themselves. I mean, look at that. You know, like, fuck. How many times have I been in that situation? Me, a man, been in that situation. And there's lots of other fucking cackling cunts all around me. Fucking sexually degrading men and all that. Hey, hey, can I fucking file charges and, 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 and get those women their fucking electric chair? Can I put them in the fucking gas chamber and, and fucking shame them on fucking television and all this shit? Can I do that because I've been a victim of the same fucking shit? When are we ever going to have fucking justice here? And this is and this is why men 
should fucking wake up and just snub women. Just fucking snub women. Don't punch women. Don't abuse, you know, don't harm women. Don't anything like that. Just ignore them. They fucking hate invisibility. They fucking hate it. Because it's a disruption of their fucking power and their manipulation. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it, it confirms their worst fear, which is that they're insignificant. And I'm, gonna ba I'm, I'm basically going to reveal, I'm fucking sick of this shit. And women, if they're so, you know, fucking smart and inherently strong and independent and brilliant and all this shit, and that, and that men have just hidden all that shit in the past, but if women are all fucking, like, brilliant and, 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 and all this like they portray themselves, then they fucking should have saw this coming. They fucking should have just, like, <clears throat> been smart enough to realize that eventually they're going to overplay their hand, they're going to piss men off, men are going to say, you know what, we don't want your vagina anymore. We want fucking justice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we want a universal standard... We want to be treated equally also. We're fucking tired of this shit. We're tired of your fucking, you know, your fucking bitching, your nagging. We're tired of your manipulation. We're tired of your fucking thievery. We're tired of your sexually transmitted diseases. We're, we're tired of, of you using, you know, we're tired of females using, you know, approval to fucking manipulate us all the time. We're fucking sick of the gender war. You know, and we're going to fucking do something about it. We're just going to basically educate ourselves, make more technological discoveries, we're going to go our own way in life and live it without women. You know, we're not going to look at your ass. We're not going to glance at your tits. We're not going to do all this shit. We're definitely not going to have fucking sex with you. And you know what? If you, you know what? <clears throat> and, and every time a woman makes advances onto a man, a man ought to fucking cry sexual harassment and treat her and treat that woman the same way she'd treat a man and all that. And women fucking hate that shit. I tell you what, one time is on, uh, on, um, June 20th of uh, 2012, <clears throat> it was last summer, and, you know, um, uh, one of my co-workers, you know, Bondo the Chlora Breath, you know, she's this old lady, you know, and she's all stubborn and all this other shit and egotistical, and, and, uh, so anyway, you know, I was working in the back, and she brought this glass that was out on the, that was out on the store shelf, and it said douchebag, you know, she brought it back there and was all making a big fuss of it. And, you know, I glanced at it and I said, yeah, it says douchebag. And she got all mad. She, like, you can tell <clears throat> she was pissed off because of the way her face looked and all that. And then she went to toss the thing in the trash and, and you know, or the, the you know, the, the trash dispenser for broken, you know, for glass items. And then she didn't toss it right and it fell and broke right there in front of my feet. And I said, oh, great, now look, you broke it. And she says, lucky it wasn't your head. I'm like, excuse me? What did you just say? Lucky it wasn't my head? And I made a fucking scene. A big fucking scene. I'm fucking tired of this oppression by women. You know what I'm saying? And how men get manipulated by women into oppressing other men. You know? Uh, vi you know, it's like hostility by proxy that like Esther Villar describes in her book. So I made a big fucking scene. I'm like, excuse did, did everybody just hear what she said? Lucky it wasn't my head that got broke? Oh, fuck. I was making a scene and, like, raising my voice. All this shit. And the whole time, <clears throat> Bondo the Chlora Breath wouldn't just leave. And she wouldn't even leave me alone. She kept trying to argue with me and run her mouth right there in front of my face. So I had to smell that fucking Clorox bleach smell in her breath. That's why she gets called Chlora Breath. <clears throat> I don't understand how somebody's breath smells like bleach. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, and and she's trying to calm me down and shut me up because I'm drawing attention to some shit that she did. And I, I, I told her, I'm like, walk away. Walk away, Bondo. You need to walk away is what you need to do. And I just, I just stood there and kept pointing to my left, you know, which is toward the door, the exit. And I said, you need to walk away. You, you need to walk away is what you need to do. Bondo, walk away now. Now, walk away. C come on, Bondo, you need to walk away. You need to walk away is what you need to do. I, I just repeated that for like a couple minutes. And then like all the managers came out of the break room in the office and they just fucking swarmed in around me. And they're like, what's going on here? And like, I'm like... You know? And, you know, and one of them said, like the main manager said... 
She said, is everything all right? And I said, it better be. I'm fucking tired of this shit. You know, and then they brought her in the office later and he heard her side of the story. And I'm glad they didn't bring me in the office. And they basically told her to leave me alone and <clears throat> and told us to stay away from each other and all that. But she fucking trespassed, you know what I'm saying? All I was doing is is doing my normal duties back there in the in the room, moving pallets, moving all kind of shit, you know. <clears throat> and like in, in the produ 